Good evening and welcome to TDM Talk Show. I'm your host, Kelsey Wilhelm. Our guest tonight is Professor Yong Meng Yu from the University of Macau. In his most recent research, the professor examines university students' preferences in regards to democracy and their views on universal suffrage and questions whether they support the 2013 Occupy Central Movement in Hong Kong. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. So this, this is a bit of a, um, a difficult topic in Macau because universal suffrage and democracy in general is something that is not often examined within the, the general political sphere in Macau. So why, uh, I understand that the research was from a couple years ago, but why, why did you choose to examine this topic? Okay, uh, I would like to use this chance to give some more information about the general background of uh, my this paper. Uh, actually, it is a uh, much bigger research program on uh, about we interested on how social media make influence on university students, their understanding on some social problems. And this survey was taken place uh, in around 2016, but we decided the questionnaire on 2015. And because um, at that time, the urban movement was just happening, so we just asked two questions related to this instant, but I would say that uh, the original design, we have no planning to focus on the urban movement, but when we finally call that all the day, oh, and I see, okay, there was some question about the urban movement, so why don't see what we got? We try to do some analysis to see how the university student, there are, uh, we would say attitude to run the, this real political incident that just happened next to Macau. So that's and, general background. And I mean, in general, it, it is a support. There, there were a couple different findings from the, the research itself in which there, there, people do tend, in general, that your, your um, sample group do tend to support the idea of democracy and the idea of universal suffrage. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. OK. Um, OK, let's see. What we get from the day, mm -hmm. uh, it is related to how we interpret the questionnaire. Uh, at a 10 point scale, mm -hmm. uh, if we just count the local students, uh, there was around 6.8. Mm -hmm. And in my understanding, it's just a moldy way. There was just a moldy way uh, support on the idea about universal suffrage at mm -hmm. the urban movement. So um, that was why I wrote in the paper, I say generally approval. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean there was a extremely high percentage mm -hmm. on that. I think what much is important is um, to see what is reason behind. So we must try to understand this pattern related directly to what was currently happening in the Macau society. So what the student, uh, does it satisfy or unsatisfy about the current governance of the Macau government? I think it is more important than simply concentrate on the survey. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in terms of their political views in general, it seems that we're, Macau continues to be very different from Hong Kong in that not only um, is there less of a push for, uh, less of a visible push for democracy, but there's more of a, um, there, there's more of a concentration on the smaller issues. Mm -hmm. So the, the people, and I think you found that within your research also, the people in, in Macau are more concentrated on things that will affect them directly. Yeah. So what, why, why do you think that is? Um, why do you think that? Uh... <laughs> I can, okay, I, w I, w I w actually today I, for this video, I bring a book that was uh, written by Harvard Yu and also uh, several other local scholars and Macau. Uh, I can, personally, I, I don't have a very sure answer about this. What I can tell you is that it is, it is just what the Macau people think about democracy. It mm -hmm. is a very, 
concentrate pattern. Mm -hmm. Because according to this book, uh, Harvard Yu was the, as far as I know, the first scholar that had ever do a survey about the political culture at Macau back to 1991. Okay. And uh, after that, he was uh, conducted like three round survey uh, with passively at 1999, uh, 2006, and 2009. And the pattern was generally very consistent that uh, Macau people, if you simply ask Macau people, uh, what do you think uh, the meaning of democracy? The highest percentage on the option is that, okay, people think if the government take care about people, mm -hmm. take care about the interests of people, mm -hmm. then this is what, the, what their understanding of democracy. So, uh, what we usually mean democracy in the Western society, we generally we call a liberal mm -hmm. democracy. It is generally more concentrated on procedure, such as now we need to have election. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the case of Macau, the understanding on democracy was more came to uh, another type of democracy. We generally call it uh, guardianship democracy. It is more, more similar to the case of China. Mm -hmm. So that is as far as what we know currently. And I mean, we, we haven't seen very, unlike Hong Kong, Macau people don't tend to demonstrate very often. Mm -hmm. um, and within, within the research, you found that 3.7% of the people who were the respondents actually did choose to participate in the Occupy Central protest. That is a relatively small percentage, but yeah. considering it is Macau, mm -hmm. um, that's relatively understandable. How do you relate that then to the 2014 demonstration against the remuneration for the, uh, that we saw outside of the, the mm -hmm. Legislative Assembly? How do you draw the parallel between the two? Is there any relation between Occupy Central? Uh, I, I don't think they have a direct correlation. Mm -hmm. um, if you have read my another article at the Asian survey, mm -hmm. uh, you will know that I called it um, the, mobilize, the social mobilization mechanism was quite different between Macau and Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. At the case of Macau, I would call it, it is issue oriented, mm -hmm. protest, uh, which simply means that uh, you can say that this is nothing about politics. There was just something uh, more related to people's daily life. Okay. At, at the case of 2014, there was um, 20,000 people that came to the street. They were to enter the uh, package, uh, the retirement package bill. Mm -hmm. It is because such this bill, there was a very weight issue that triggered the anger of the whole Macau society. Mm -hmm. The people that just think, okay, how come such kind of bill, how come the government can make such that kind of bill? Mm -hmm. There was, we have, um, for general people, we have the evidence to question the government whether this involves some kind of, uh, we, we can't say that this is corruption, but it, it will be something that was unacceptable for common people there because how come the higher government officials, they benefit itself so lot from that bill. Mm -hmm. It's not fair. So there was a very specific issue. But on the other hand, back in the whole history from the Macau, we never see a protest was directly triggered by political issue. That was very different from the case of Hong Kong. Hong Kong, we can say, uh, we don't need to talk about the urban movement. We back to the 2003, there was the uh, there was a very large scale protest to uh, anti the basic law Article 23. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which so, is still being debated today. They're still trying to pass yes. the legislation. Yes, the, I know that Carrie Lam this year said that she's trying to push it. Yes, and we can see how about at the case of Macau, uh, the Article 23 was successfully passed mm -hmm. at the case of Macau. So the, all these case just simply demonstrate that uh, the protest mobilization mechanism is very different between the two cities, even that they are both under the so-called one country system, one country two system.
Um, you mentioned that one of the focuses was the social media aspect. Obviously, we're in a time where social media has become more of a tool, more of a political tool to be able both to be used for good and for bad. Um, do you find that people, do you think that people are more prone to, let's say, demonstrate or express their opinion by using social media? Do you think that they're mobilized quicker through social media? Oh, from this point, I think, yes. Um, there was also a point that was I talking about on uh, the paper published on the Asian survey. I think uh, social media did give uh, mostly the young people there are a channel for them to more easily instantly to express their opinion mm -hmm. about public affairs. They also give it uh, a possible uh, channel to conduct mobilization. But again, um, I would say it is issue specific mm -hmm. because you can see, uh, just see about the new Macau Association, mm -hmm. there, were, there was Longji try to uh, launch so many protests mm -hmm. in the past years, but only very few cases, there are a lot of people come. Most, in most cases, there are only very, very few participation. Mm -hmm. So there was, why? Until now, we only see one case, one large, we can call large scale protest uh, in Macau. Do you think that the recent change in which the applications for, um, for demonstrations or, or um, not necessarily protests, but marches, uh, changing from being under formerly IACM, now IAM, to uh, the, the, the public security police force, do you think that that is a deterrent to people who would choose to raise their voices? Uh, you mean um, whether the protest that they will use uh, force at the protest? Well, formerly you would have to apply to do a protest through IACM, mm. but that has since been changed to the, the application goes directly to the public security police force. Now, some people, including the New Macau Association, have mm -hmm. talked about how that could potentially be a deterrent to um, people choosing to protest, choosing to put in their application of protest. Do you think that that's something that will affect it? Um, uh, I would like to clarify. Mm -hmm. uh, I would like to clarify that I was understanding why your questions. Uh, you mean? Uh, right now, the protesters they will face more risk, is, risk when they uh, participate in the protest. Uh, I think that in in general, the what has been put forward so far is that people might be deterred from choosing to protest mm -hmm. purely because they have to send their application directly to the police mm -hmm. and not to IACM. Oh. Do you think that that is something that could affect uh, even subconsciously? Do you think that that would affect how people who would p be potential protesters? Um, personally, I would think, uh, as we've seen just before, just when the 2014, when the uh, anti-retirement package protest was happened, mm -hmm. there was a signal that the Macau government was trying to tightening about the social control. Mm -hmm. And this, yeah, I agree that uh, this more or less will make people think twice when they try to put when they try to protest, mm -hmm. because this means that uh, they were ninety face more risk compared to the past. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was uh, currently what I did when it come from my mind. That I can tell the national anthem emblem and sign. Um legislation recently is, is being implemented and they've, they've decided to take out some of the measures such as for those who choose to, who are not able to stand mm -hmm. to, to oh. respect the sign. Um, but in, in terms of, they're, they're pushing for that also to be taught in schools. They're pushing, pushing for the national anthem to be something. Um, what, where is this leading in terms of, we are one country, two systems, mm -hmm. but it, does it seem like there is more of the one country aspect mm -hmm. being enforced in Macau? Yeah. Um, I I think I would agree with you that um, theoretically uh, under the one country two system mm -hmm. that 
uh, Macau and Hong Kong should be a certain degree of autonomy, self-autonomy. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, at least at the case of Macau, uh, I don't think the Macau government they will take it very seriously about the issue of self-autonomy. Mm -hmm. It seems like that the government was more they were they were more like to uh, simply a imply the national policy. Mm -hmm. That's currently what can observe. So it so if uh, the central government won there was uh, that kind of building to pass on the request assembly. So the Macau government seems that okay, so we just follow what um, the central government want us to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and it also seems like that there was not much uh, objection from the Macau society. Mm -hmm. There was only a few very small voices that were concerned about there was some uh, technical issue. There were also some about the problem about uh, the involved of the one country two system. Mm -hmm. But it seems that doesn't matter much uh, what about this year we're going to have, this year is a very interesting year for Macau in particular, um, and we're also going to be having the upcoming elections for the chief executive. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that by changing chief executive, Macau will have a, a different political orientation? Um, I am a political scientist, so I, I was more like to consider uh, the chief executive was just a player inside a existing political system mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the chief executive was just a player inside uh, there was political system there was a uh, existing rough game mm -hmm. so I won't think there was a uh, very big change uh, even we change another chief executive uh, but I would say uh, no matter who will be the next chief executive of Macau there was a lot of social problem that he need to deal with. Mm -hmm. For example, the most single urgent issue was about the uh, license of gambling. Mm -hmm. Of course, the housing issue, the issue of transportation. There was a huge difference from the society about such that kind of uh, we call the low politics that mm -hmm. related to people's daily life. Uh, so I will predict that the next chief executive would be more likely have a uh, a strong strong personal style at the governance maybe more similar to the first chief executive Emil Hall because right now the people think that we will lead a relative strong man to lead Macau to cope with these tough problems. Now speaking of the, the low politics um what are people most concerned about currently? Um, as I said before, um, they were probably mostly about housing issue mm -hmm. and transportation. Uh, but on the other hand, we can also notice that there were uh, some, mostly the young people, they concern about some new social issues, such like uh, the, uh, the policy about protecting the environment, mm -hmm. such like the protection on the historical building, mm -hmm. and also about the uh, rise of animal. There was generally, usually, there will, uh, we call it, there was uh, some social problem they were concerned by the post-materialism. There was only when a society there was reach a certain level of uh, development that the people will begin consider that kind of social issue. There were some develop, uh, they don't developly related to people's uh, living who. Mm -hmm. So again, if there are more and more young people, they concern about that kind of uh, not very traditional social problem. They will have a different requirement toward the government. And the government, they need to consider how to respond to that kind of list. For example, do they need to be uh, more open and more participation 
at the policy making. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, uh, I think uh, the existing government was doing some kind of that experiment. Well, right now, uh, public consultation was uh, widely used on government policy making. Mm -hmm. But, but on the other hand, we say we won't see much influence mm -hmm. on that kind of public consultation. Mm -hmm. So I think there was something that the government they. Uh, I would say their intention was good, mm -hmm. but their capacity is no. They simply, they just waste the expectation of society, but finally, there will nothing happen. Now, is that, is the, let's say, the fault, is that on the side of the, the policy makers, or is that on the side of lack of participation by the public itself? Because the public consultations are there, they're available to be accessed. Mm -hmm. um, is there much participation? Um, I didn't actually uh, to collect the data to, to make a very uh, complete analysis, but I, I, I guess there will be, uh, depending on the issue, there will mm -hmm. be very uh, extensively on different issues. Some issue may be uh, such like um, the land reclamation, mm -hmm. there was a very huge public consultation, then maybe uh, we'll attract more citizens to reflect their opinion, but mm -hmm. on somehow some much more technical issues, such as like the protection on the historical building, was well, too technical. I think that kind of issue, it is not a good uh, policy agenda to conduct public consultation mm -hmm. because, the, yeah, because even for me, I don't think I can contribute any opinion on that kind of policy. Yeah. In general, um, in terms of political participation, do you think that over the course of, of the terms of this current chief executive, have people become more politically active or have they stayed about at the same level? Mm, you mean the, the young, young generation yes. or, or in general? In particular, the younger generation, in also because your, your research focuses on the university students, which are actually at a, a critical point in their lives in which they're deciding their political motivations. Um, do you think that within that group of people, have they become more politically oriented recently? Mm, I, was, I would say it is a, it, it, it will be a question that will be really more uh, empirical evidence to evaluate, but if we just based on some uh, personal observation, uh, yeah, we we can see that there were there were some young people they were they were uh, they were pay more attention about uh, the public affair, but mm -hmm. it may be not necessarily political or random. Again, they were just simply disappointed about the quality of governance. Mm -hmm. They just uh, want to stand out their what they what they are feeling about the government, and they just try to contribute some uh, policy alternative, uh, and even just simply criticism about the government policy, and try to push the government to make a better agenda. What about um, it's something that's been spoken about very briefly in Macau, and it's something that comes up on the agenda quite often in Hong Kong: universal suffrage. Mm -hmm. um, Macau doesn't seem like it will ever have universal suffrage. But do you think that that could be something beneficial to Macau? Uh, <laughs> currently, it's not. Mm -hmm. You can see uh, after the after the urban movement was broken out, mm -hmm. they were actually directly make the central government. They were worried about with so-called national security. Mm -hmm. So. Because this reason, it, it is very unlikely that uh, either Hong Kong and Macau there will and the stiff step forward uh, on the political reform in the near future. Mm -hmm. yeah, because especially right now there was a trade war between the United States and China. So the issue about uh, economic development and also the national security is definitely the uh, which is the most important thing that currently inside uh, China's leader. Mm -hmm. so, so only when they 
have certainly deal with that type of tough questions, then maybe they will think about, okay, about how about the political reform at Hong Kong and Macau. What, what about, um, the, within your research, you also say that large-scale social movement hardly takes place in Macau. Mm -hmm. um, how does that contrast with Hong Kong? Oh, again, uh, I was said before this about the mobilization mm -hmm. mechanism. Mm -hmm. Macau was, they were usually protest concentrated with specific social problems, mm -hmm. uh, which means that only a social problem that were concerned by uh, a lot of people at Macau society, mm -hmm. then they were likely to translate into a relative large scale protest. Mm -hmm. But in Hong Kong, it is uh, quite different. In Hong Kong, uh, usually the larger scale uh, protest was uh, more likely political oriented. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, uh, when Hong Kong people right now they were fighting for the democracy, they were somehow correlated with the so-called so uh, local system. Mm -hmm. There was a very strong local identity. There was uh, combining with uh, their will for on the democratization. Mm -hmm. And in Macau, we don't have that kind of local system. Mm -hmm. So we, we won't see that, okay, um, fighting for democracy is the only way that we can defy the uniqueness of as a Hong Konger. Mm -hmm. We don't have that kind of emotion. Mm -hmm. So that is why there was very, I think, very difficult to mobilize larger scale uh, protests in Macau. How, how is the Greater Bay Area Initiative going to affect um, both both Macau and Hong Kong in terms of politics? Politics? I personally, I don't think the Great uh, Area of Bay will have much influence on politics because currently what we say, again, um, at China, there are, the central government, they want to uh, say a lot of, uh, I would say, idea, mm -hmm. such like the Chinese dream mm -hmm. and uh, the One Belt One Road, also mm -hmm. the Greater Bay. But actually, uh, because they, this idea was just too abstract, mm -hmm. we can't figure out what extent it is meaning. So what currently in the case of the Great Area Bay, there was, it seems was just uh, more like the traditional economic cooperation. Mm -hmm. We don't see there were much correlation in terms of politics and also society. Yeah, so I don't think they will have much influence uh, in the political. Uh, I noticed also one, one of the things you mentioned within your research was that the support for the Umbrella Movement was likely associated with distrust of the establishment. Um, is there a continuing distrust of the, of the establishment? Okay, let's see. Well, did I, did I wrote it at the paper? <laughs> I think I think I, 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 my analysis was uh, there was a regression about on, uh, I mean, to try to find out some statistical correlation between mm -hmm. um, their attitude on the urban movement and the political trust on the Macau government. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I, I, I would just say what I come out from the model, which is, okay, there was a negative mm -hmm. uh, correlation. But again, I, it is more important to see how how we to integrate the result. Mm -hmm. Does it mean that um, Macau people has a strong, uh, there was a strong demand on democracy? Uh, I don't think so. I, I think uh, it is more likely it was a uh, reflection on the disappointed on the current low quality on governance. Mm -hmm. Because we, we've, we, we know that there was two most likely uh, reasons that will let people distrust to the government. The one thing is that, okay, I, will, I was fundamentally questioned about the political system, mm -hmm. but it is not seen was the case of Macau. And the, another reason is that, okay, the government do the bad job. I think it's more likely was the case of Macau. So would you say these, these problems that we're encountering, such, encountering such as housing, um, health, are, are they being fixed by the current um, by the current governance, and can they be fixed by a change in governance, say with the chief executive or through new legislative assembly elections? Do you think that things will change drastically? Uh, 
I would think it is very depending on um, it's very depending on the chief executive uh, himself mm -hmm. whether he want to be uh, a reformer or just uh, or just like uh, what anyone stating at this position whether they want to uh, do something to make people uh, to bring people bad the confidence toward the government mm -hmm. that is again there is what we know there was the design of the um, across political system it mm -hmm. is a uh, we generally we call it um, uh, how do how to say it in English that it, 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 it is uh, where we depending on the person personal will of the chief executive yeah, that was my understanding well we will see how things change this year um, with the elections coming up well with the change in the chief executive coming up at the end of the year thank you again for being on the show I thank really you, appreciate Cassie. it that's all we have for tonight. We'll be back next week with more TDM Talk Show. Thank you again.